Good afternoon. I'm with George Black, CEO of Ramp Metals. The symbol is R-A-M-P on the TS6 Venture. Jordan, good morning. How are you today? Good morning, Robert. I'm I'm doing great. How are you? I'm excellent. Uh, I woke up to your news release this morning, and it's interesting because there's two takeaways, or at least there's two takeaways that I had from reading it. And that is that you've completed six goals at the Ranger target. We also just did this new uh, TDEM survey over the property that has identified some new anomalies. So can you tell us about that? Yeah. So first off, I got to give a shout out to Flamingo Drilling. Um, they, they're the drillers on site um, working with us completing this program. And we're getting about 70 to 80 meters a day. Couldn't be more happy. The weather's holding up. Um, so we're making great progress. As you saw in the press release, six holes completed already in the Ranger area. And then we finally got our, our data set back for the geophysics that we flew. And we, uh, we uncovered some very interesting anomalies, both at Ranger and Rush. Um, at Ranger, as, you, as we were talking earlier, um, we hit these really nice conductors on this... Uh, northeast southwest trend that's just on the other side of of ranger where we made the original discovery okay so six hole pleaded at ranger and is my interpretation uh right that those were the six holes that you planned to drill at the start of the, the program yeah, so we completed all the holes that were, were planned. Originally, we were thinking five or six because um, everything was going well. We threw an extra one in there to, to make it six. And uh, now we're actually, uh, today we're heading over to this new anomaly on the um, east side of the lake, and we're going to drill that target today. Ah, okay. So that's exciting. So this new anomaly that's identified by the HTDEM survey is to the east of where the you know discovery was made at Ranger is that correct that's correct so you have Ranger um, one which is about a hundred meters from the lake and then you hop over to the other side of the lake which it's not too far away uh, and then you we uncovered these series of anomalies that we 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 didn't know they were there before. Okay, that's that's very interesting. So that's a completely new area, and now you're going to test that with the drill rig. So the survey, the HTDEM survey, tell us a little bit about what these anomalies are telling you potentially. Yeah. So for. Even before we started this drill program, we had geophysics flown a couple of years ago. We we used the same system, TDEM, and what that is is it allows us to get uh, both mag and EM or electrical conductivity. The map that uh, we're looking at here is uh, the conductivity map, and it basically shows us how conductive the rock is in certain areas. And what we've noticed from our previous drilling program is when we're drilling these conductors, uh, they end up being sulfides. They could either be mineralized and good sulfides or kind of like iron pure type sulfides. And you're, you're always hoping for the good type. But what we've uncovered, or at least our working theory, um, and, and we're learning more on this program as well, is that there could be a spatial relationship between these conductors um, that we're showing on, on this figure one map in the press release and where gold's been discovered so far, both at Rogue and Ranger. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah, so the the area where the you know discovery was drilled at Ranger last year is not lighting up in this survey, but in close proximity to it, to the east, lighting up pretty prominently. So that's going to be interesting to see. I know investors are going to want to have you answer this question so i'm going to ask it anyway uh I, i'm not sure what you'll say what observations can you make about the drill core that you saw in the first six holes at ranger does it look like the 2024 hole 
Yeah, I think you uh, you asked that great because uh, with disclosures and what's uh, been PR'd so far, we're hitting the court's diorite in the levels we wanted to hit it before. So similar rock and rock packages that we are targeting um, from the original gold discovery zone. Right now, it's looking like it's an intrusive zone, which is good because I, I don't know if you remember, but we were doing the bedrock mapping earlier and we didn't see it come up uh, to site anywhere. So it's looking like that's a buried intrusion. So everything that we're finding so far is is a, a, a checking a box on our list. Um, we're seeing obviously a little bit of disseminated sulfides in there. And that's probably all I could say at this point, but it's really... Um, I guess as a grand scheme of the drill program, everything's going according to plan. Okay. Yeah. And, and good progress so far to get six holes done already that that's lightning fast. So yeah, you got a, you got a great contractor there in Saskatchewan. So um, just kind of interested. So you, you drill this hole in this new target area at Ranger and then what will be next? I mean, is it possible that you'll keep testing that area or are you going to move to one of the other target areas? So we only have one hole um, planned in, in this new anomaly just because it's new. It was kind of unexpected. So since the drills uh, at Ranger, we're going to finish that hole first, probably just one in there for now. And then uh, later this week, we'll fly over to Rush. Um, which we're excited about because if you remember from our uh, press release before, we uh, we hit 1.6% copper with tickers of gold and silver. I think um, that had 0.8 uh, uh, grams per ton of, of gold and 115 grams per ton of silver. So we're looking at this nice uh, VMS target. And uh, going back to the geophysics as well, we, uh, we noticed there's a, a pretty nice conductor underneath those grab samples we found. Yeah, I noticed that too when I was looking at the news this morning. So, so that makes it even more intriguing uh, to to test that target. So, how many holes does Ramp uh, have planned for the Rush target? So, Rush, we're gonna drill approximately two or three. Um, we want to go right down the middle of that body, and we um, we had Stephen Delch give us a few targets to help with that. So, we gave him the raw data. Uh, he's a geophysics expert, and he helps us with the targeting, um, along with uh, the data that comes from from Axiom. So we're going to try to, um, I guess, essentially uncover massive sulfides. That's what everyone's always looking for, right? You want to see that uh, uh, nice copper-looking core. And uh, Rush will be, in our opinion, more, um, if everything works out, more, more visual toweling. So you'll have an XRF guy, and you'll be able to um do more things on the fly where ranger was really fine grain right so it's a lot harder to to see on the fly and, and you're relying on assays a lot more yeah yeah so at rush you're looking for more copper and gold and silver whereas at ranger it's more of a pure gold target with some sniffs of silver but it would be interesting to see what you find in this new area uh to the east at Ranger, because if the if the HTDEM is is lighting up sulfides, then who knows what metals you might you might find there. Uh, so so let's take a step back, Jordan. Just talk about being a junior mining CEO in this this crazy market environment. Obviously, every stock has been volatile the last few weeks, and Ramp is no different. How does this market volatility affect you know you? as a CEO or, or the company? Yeah, great question. I think with uncertainty in the markets, it affects everyone essentially equally, especially when you're getting mass market sell-offs um, in general. So what happens is we're a, we're a leveraged gold play. And even though gold's at all-time highs, um, people might get fearful and they might get or get liquidated or margin in other positions that they have to sell certain things in, in companies they like. And uh, essentially it goes down the list. So you saw we corrected from about $1.40 uh, down to about 80 cents. And I think we're trading at about, uh, what is it, 95 cents today, 97 cents. Um, so yeah, we we did feel the, the global sell-off and... Uh, it was actually 
a good opportunity to go out there and reach out to new shareholders uh, and existing ones where maybe they missed that initial run up and um, it was able, we were able to speak with people and, and try to get them into the story and say, look, this is a, a good position. It's a good correction. So it, it works both ways, right? It's, uh, it's not, it, it kills your momentum in some, some sense, but the positive is you might have people that are more willing to, to get into your story on a pullback. Do you think that the sell-off in ramp from, as you said, 140 to the 90 cents, is that is that purely just the sector volatility in this tariff turmoil? Or do you think it's people worried about the drill program as well? I think it's mostly volatility because um, usually drilling is an exciting time. And, and if you look at the history of of uh, junior mining companies, they they usually run up um, during the drill program into assays, right? And we still are about three months away from assays. So typically, you'd see a company like Ramp go go in higher into the assays and and not correct during the drill program. Mm-hmm. So I guess final question: um, How many more holes are left in this phase of drilling? at Rod and Stone Southwest and, and what other news flow can investors expect from ramp over the coming months? Yeah, so we're going to drill somewhere between six and nine more holes. Um, like we talked about, we're going to head over to Rush after this uh, new target at Rangers drilled. Uh, we'll drill two or three at Rush. And then let's not forget Rogue, right? Rogue is where we hit some of the... Uh, um, good gold in soils, right? I think we hit 530 PPB uh, in the soils above that rogue target. So uh, so your viewers know that percentage is, I think, top 2% in the world for, for gold in soils. So there's something going on in the middle of the property as well. And we also want to throw down a couple holes at rogue, which we did hit low grade in the core in the last uh, investigation. Okay. And, and w- you said... You said a few months for assays. So does that mean, since you started in March, does that mean we'll probably get first assays in June? Yeah. So we're uh, we're predicting that we'll get them in June. Obviously, we're at the hands of the the lab, but uh, that's what we're shooting for. All right, Jordan. Uh, I'm excited to see this next hole at Ranger and what comes of it, and then obviously the the assays from. Uh, all the drilling and all the different target areas. Definitely exciting uh, time for shareholders of Ramp Metals. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Definitely an exciting time for Ramp.